thinks enough of his people to save them, the devil think enough of God people to destroy them. To keep them from being saved and from being right. Let us remember, it doesn't take a lot of effort to be destroyed. How many things did Adam do to get put out to God? One. How many? One. All you got to do is believe one lie. That one lie is a spot. You know, someone that ironed their clothes, they want to get every wrinkle out. Some material is stubborn. So they may get a spray bottle and spray a mist at that wrinkle and then hit the button so the steam can come out. <laughs> they want to cast out that wrinkle. That's right. Amen. Then when they hold that garment up, they say, yeah, all right, it's, it's all right now. All right. Well, God is not allowing no wrinkles enter the kingdom. That's right. And to get all the wrinkles out of us, you need a hard pressed message. And God knows I don't mind using an iron on you. And a wrinkle is just when part of the material is out of place. That's all a wrinkle is. Evaluate yourself and see how much of yourself is out of place. And I guarantee there's a whole lot of us, if not all of us, I take that back, not a whole lot, all of us got something out of place in thought here. We got something out of place the way we feel here. Which is causing our temple, our body to act out of place here. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. All right, Williams, open your Bible anywhere. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Let's dive into it and take it apart and take our time and go to work and dissect the law of truth. That's right. All right, follow me. Ephesians chapter 5 and <coughs> verse 26. All right. That he might sanctify. No, 23. 23. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23. What is it? For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. All right, you that got your phone on, I give you a chance to answer it. Maybe your pastor's calling you to come back to church. <laughs> Glory to God. Hear this now. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23. What is it? For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband. In order to be the head, you can't be a henpeck. I despise henpeckism. That's right. Because the man's supposed to have the characteristics of God. Because man was made in God's image, not just in shape. It was made in God's image, shape, and character. And character. Man held the image, lost the character. That's right. That's what it meant when God told Adam, the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. He said, the day you eat thereof. But notice when he ate, he still was living. That's right. But he said, the day you eat thereof, surely you shall surely die. Surely so the die. question is, how did he die? Right. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. death. When he sinned, he immediately died. That's right. The whole characteristics of God changed. And the performance of his temple, his house, his body. That's right. But he helped God shape and helped God form. But his character changed. That's right. Examine yourself. Do you see that within yourself? Oh, yes. Because there's certainly in the world today among religion. Oh, yes. The name of Jesus is being exploited, misused, misused. played with, tampered with. Amen. It is common to find the church today, church of the Lord Jesus Christ, church outside of the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> church under the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Church of God, church of this, church of that, church of the other. That's right. The devil letting you know that he's right up there with you with the church name. For ye have perverted the words of the living God. Do you hear this? Jeremiah chapter 23 and at verse 36. Ye have perverted. Wait a minute. Hmm. Perversion and God. Get me, don't mix. That's right. So imagine someone can 
Do what to the word? Ye have perverted. Imagine someone can pervert. That's right. God's word. God's word. How was that done? It's done by handling the word of God deceitfully. Deceitfully. You can handle something clean and handle it dirty. That's right. Did you hear me? That's right. Something can be clean but yet handled dirty. dirty. Preacher's been doing it for years. Oh yes. The word of God is infallible. The word of God is clean, flawless. But it's being handled dirty. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. Listen at the brother Paul. Second Corinthians chapter four and at verse one. All right. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in, in craftiness, nor handling, handling the word of God dece how? deceitfully. Hmm. Let's see the examples of the word of God being handled in a deceitful Mischievous, mischievous, undermining manner. That's right. In the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's make some examples. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10, we'll add verse 19. Follow me. A feast is made for laughter. A feast made for laughter. And wine maketh merry. Wine made for merry. But money. But money. Answereth all things. That's one of those scriptures used in a perverse manner. That's right. Money answer for all things, and here, I'm going to throw this at you. Money answer for all things, and yet money don't buy all things. That's right. That's right. I uh, say, wait a minute, Pastor Jenner, that's my problem with you. you. The Bible say one thing and you say another. No, I'm not saying another. No. I want to enlarge on the statement. Money answereth all things. And yet you can't buy all things with money. That's right. In the book of Acts. Let me show you what you can't buy. Acts chapter 8 and we're at verse 17. Listen. Then laid they their hands on them. Then laid their hands, the apostles laid hands on them down in Samaria after they was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they received the Holy Ghost. And they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that when through Simon laying on of the apostles' the hands, laying on hand of the, apostles, the Holy Ghost was given. The Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money. Simon offered money. And go back to the Old Testament chapter and verse and what did it say? Back in Ecclesiastes 10 in verse 19. Ecclesiastes 10 19 says, but money answereth all things. Money answer for how much? All things. How much? All things. How much? All now things. Now let's go back to Act of the Apostle chapter 8 and see what this Simon offered the apostle. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. What was it? He offered them money. He offered them money. Saying, give me also this give, power. I want to buy some power. <laughs> that, that's right. I would like to purchase, purchase God. That's right. Who you think the Holy Ghost is? That's God. That's God. I would like to buy Jehovah. <laughs> That's right. I would like to buy the I am that I am. That's right. I would like to buy everlasting. That's right. I want to show you. How perverse he was. How perverted. Listen. Saying, give me also this power. Give me also this power. That on whomsoever I lay hands. That whoever. I don't want the Holy Ghost. That's right. To receive it the way you did. Right. I want to take a shortcut and buy it. Buy it. That's right. The Holy Ghost is priceless. Amen. And if God cannot be bought. We that are God's people should have the characteristics of God that we should not be able to be bought. That's right. Especially if we already was purchased. Purchased. That's right. Glory to God because the scripture says you are bought with the price. With the price. With the price. Listen. Saying, give me also this power. Give me also this power. Give me this anointing. That on whomsoever, that on whomsoever I, lay hands, I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. He may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto oh, him. Oh, man, that thing didn't sit right with Peter at all. That's right. Listen how Peter retaliated at old Simon the sorcerer. But Peter said unto him, thy money Your perish money with thee. Your money will perish with thee. Why? Because thou you hast thought. thought. 
that the gift of God that God's gift may be purchased may with money. May be bought with money. With money. Then what did Peter tell him? Thou hast neither part nor lot you, in this matter. You don't have no part, no lot. In other words, you ain't got nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. For thy heart is not right. What? Thy heart is not right. That's the condition of every preacher that make you believe that money is your connection to God. That's right. That's right. That's right. What is the condition of the heart? For thy heart is not right. I don't care how much money you have or don't have. God wants your heart to be right with him. That's, it. That's why it's hard for a millionaire to walk with God. Yeah. He or she don't feel the need That's to right. want God because they feel as though they have everything. That's right. You can have all the houses and money and land under the sun. But uh, if you don't have God, you don't have anything. That's right. I'm laboring to pound this in the minds of creation. Amen. What did he say? For thy heart is not right. Your heart is not right. In the sight of God. In God's eyes. But Peter said unto him, thy money perish with you. Your money will perish with you. Because thou hast thought that the you gift of God. that God's gift. May be purchased may with be money. May be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. Wait a minute. You don't have nothing to do with this? Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. What else? But thy heart is not right in the sight of what God. What else? Repent. What? Repent. All you prosperity preachers, what you got to do? Repent. All you preachers that close your eyes and go in a fake tongue and say the Lord said if you give this and you give that, you will get it back one billion fold. What you got to do? Repent. All you heathens that's touching your flat screen. <laughs> that's right. Looking at some mega pervert. That's right. So you touch the screen and say y'all touch and agree. Amen. What you got to do? Repent. Why? Therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God. Repent of your wickedness and start praying. If perhaps the thought of thine heart. That the very thought that the way you think. May be forgiven thee. God may forgive the way you think because the Bible said the Holy Ghost thinketh no evil. No evil. For I perceive that thou art in the gall He's of bitterness. He's still not done laying them out. <laughs> That's right. I perceive you in the gall of bitterness. Now, we would say it this way you got some nerve. That's right. You got some nerve. I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness. But the gall of bitterness is in these preachers. That's why they tell you, right. you that want a great blessing, get in this line. Yeah. The $10,000 line or the $50,000 line. Yeah. You that want another blessing. That's why some of you people, when these mega devils come to your city, your state, your country, yeah. you have to pay an X amount of dollars to sit close or a reasonable distance from the preacher. From the preacher. <clears throat> when I went to Jamaica... I was in Kingston, the capital, the rough part of Jamaica. Amen. And Jake's was there, I believe, a week before I got there. He wouldn't stay in Kingston, too rough for him. <laughs> and uh, when I got there, the auditorium was jam-packed. We had a few thousands there. And there were some people who came with newspapers, the Jamaican newspapers, showing the write-up. How Jake's them was charging people who wanted to sit close to him. 5,000 a pop. My Lord. And those that set a reasonable distance, about 2,000 a pop. Mm. Can you imagine? My Lord. It's not like Jake's is the savior or the redeem of nobody. That's right. But money have became, and don't misunderstand me, it takes money to function. That's right. Bills got to be paid. Yeah. But money have been misused and misrepresented. That's it. That's to right. make people believe that the more you give, yeah. the more God will do for you. Yeah. In fact, it used to be a song they sang. You can't be God given. God given. The more you give, the more he give to you. and the more he give to you. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> because if that was so, he said that the poor you have with you always, always. That's right. well if you ain't got no money to give That's right. the greatest offering you can give the Lord is you is you Amen. you yes. that's right so if they pass the offering pan around and you ain't got nothing to put in there don't feel bad yeah. you ever been to a church and they pass the offering pan around and the preacher stand like a vulture over a corpse <laughs> that's right and if he don't have what he want or what he feels 
What he feel as though should be in there? Right then, he get in a spirit. That's right. He never have an anointing until it's money time. Yeah. That's right. He get in the spirit. Right then, right then, he start telling you the Lord said that is not enough in this pot. That's right. The Lord said there's five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars more in the house, and the Lord said if you give it, you got a great blessing coming. That's right. These men lie on God with absolutely no conscience whatsoever. They are not afraid. They are not scared. They do it with ease. Oh yes. That is the blessing plan. The plan is get your money. That's right. The blessing is he have your money. He have it. That's right. What do you get in return? Everlasting hell. Amen. From being lied to and played with. Understand this, brothers and sisters. You have one soul. Amen. One. That's it. You can hop around from church to church, church to church, and go listen at preachers because you like them. Who cares because you like them? Amen. Amen. Many folk hate me because of the way I sound. <laughs> if your house is on fire, <laughs> if your house is on fire, Amen. and uh, blazes of flames all around you, no fireman is going to yell nicely. Miss, there's flames all around you. <laughs> do you. Do you really feel like coming out? You, come on, it's hot up there. That's right. He's going to be waving, screaming, hollering. That's right. Why? Because he don't want to see your life perish. That's right. God told the preacher, cry loud. Cry loud. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Cry loud. Cry loud. 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 Then he said, spare, spare not. not. How loud do you want it, Lord? Lift, Lift up, up my voice, your voice like a trumpet. As what? Like a trumpet. Hold it. Why not lift up your voice as a flute? Amen. <laughs> what is so significant about a trumpet? A trumpet. Sound of a trumpet is piercing. Oh, yeah. Sound of a trumpet is a wake up call in military. That's right. Sound of a trumpet in military is time to assemble. That's right. Sound of a trumpet in military also death. Yes. A trumpet is used in all three categories. That's right. God's voice will sound like a trumpet when it's time to gather. For the Lord himself, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout. With what? With a shout. Hold it. In 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 16. I have to take it section by section and piece by piece. Because we've been taught shouting is. No, that's holy dance. That's right. Shout with your mouth, you dance with your feet. That's right. That's not shout. That's not shout. Are you listening? Amen. The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With a shout. With the voice of the Talk archangel. About his sound that comes from his mouth. That's right. His voice gonna sound like what? Of the archangel. It's giving different descriptions of the one voice. That's right. The first sound is gonna be what? That's heard. With a shout. With the voice of it's the archangel. Gonna shout, and it's gonna sound like the voice of an archangel or a chief angel. And there is no angel more chief than God. That's right. What else? And with the trump of God. When I was little, I was taught that Gabriel going to blow a trumpet. Amen. You ever heard that lie? Oh, yes. If Gabriel going to blow the trumpet, that's empowering the angels to be the resurrection. That's right. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. No angel is going to blow no horn no. to raise no dead. The Lord himself. Who doing it? The Lord himself. Know ye the Lord that he is God. That's right. Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said... I am Jesus. I am Jesus. So Jesus himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Glory to God. Amen. Shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel. And with the trump of God. The trump of God. And that sound is going to do what? And the dead in Christ shall rise first. He's calling for an assembly. That's right. That's why a trumpet is necessary. Necessary. It's a roundup call. That's right. It disturbs you when you sleep. If you're in a good sleep, brother. And someone start blowing the trumpet. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, they blowing it. 
You may put your head under that pillar. You may get frustrated or you may yell, shut that noise up. That's right. <laughs> so God tell the preacher, lift up your voice. Like a trumpet. Make it loud, Make it strong, trumpet. piercing. <laughs> That's right. To do what? And show my people their transgression. Show them. Show them. He didn't say make friends with them. No, show my people their transgression. Show them. That's it. Show my people. Show them where they're wrong. That's right. And that's where the most preachers have failed. They failed to do that. They are afraid to show the world where they're wrong. Instead, they walk hand in hand with the world. That's right. Because they're afraid to be looked at as the odd one. That's right. Don't you know if you got a mind to walk with God, the Bible call you a peculiar people? Peculiar people. That's right. You're already going to be an odd fella and an odd sister. That's right. But if you walk hand in hand with the world until your darkness overtake your light, then the question is, as Jesus said, how great is your darkness? That's right. There got to be a difference between holy and unholy, clean and unclean. That's right. All right, let's go back to the book of Ephesians where we were. Back in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23. Follow me. For the husband is the head of the wife. Yes. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Uh -huh. And he is the savior of the body. Wait a minute. He is what? He is the savior of the body. Who's the savior of the body? And he is the savior. Read up above that. Even as Christ. As who? Christ. Even as Christ, what about Christ is the head of the church, and he, he is the savior of the body. We only got one savior. One savior. And God is that savior. That's right. And Christ is that savior. That's it. And we don't have two saviors. No, no. Right. He is the savior of the, the body. keeper, the healer, the protector of the body, of the church, of his people. That's right. His bride. That's right. All right. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, as the church submits itself to Christ, so let the wives be the be to their own husbands. So the wives be to their own husband. How much? In everything. But I don't mean you got to sin for them. That's right. That's right. That's right. You don't have to sin for them. No. Amen. When that man try to forbid you from serving God, now it's a fight pursuit. It's a fight. Because now you ain't going to stand between my relationship between me and God. No. That's worth fighting for. That's right. And that's worth keeping up a ruckus about. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15 and verse 20. Says what? He hath commanded no man to do wickedly. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly. Neither hath he given any man. Neither hath he given any man. License. A license. To sin. To sin. That's right. So no man got a license or got a right or got authority to keep your wife from wanting to be holy. That's right. So you got to balance out the scripture. That's right. Obey him in all, all things, things, but neither has he given any man. But God having given man license, permission, or authority. To sin. Sin. <laughs> That's right. You see how the Bible harmonizes? That's right. So when that man tried to tell you, well, I'm the head and I'm the all right, that's wonderful. Come on back to the Bible now and <laughs> see right. the information that you're giving her want her to sin. That's right. Until you lay ultimatums. If you don't do this, then we're gonna go one way and we're gonna go the other. No, 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 no. God first. That's it. Are you getting me? That's right. All right, come on, son. Back in Ephesians 5 and verse 24. What is it? Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, uh -huh. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Yes. Husbands, love husbands. your wives. Love your wife. Even as Christ also loved the church. That's, oh. To what degree? And gave himself for it. Hmm. You got to love her until you're willing to die for her. That's right. That's something. I know that many have a problem with that. <laughs> Some men saying now, Pastor Dennis, if you knew my wife, you wouldn't even die for it. <laughs> and some women saying the same thing, hmm, I ain't dying for that. She won't even say I ain't dying for him. Right. She'll say, hmm, I ain't dying for that. That's right. Glory to God. <laughs> That's right. Come on, William. Husbands, love your wives, <laughs> even as Christ also loved the church. And what? And gave himself for it. Why? That he might sanctify. Hold it. Before we can be clean, That's right. we have to be sanctified first. Sanctified. Yes, sir. Somebody said, well, I thought 
Cleanliness is what sanctify you? No, sanctification first. First. For to be clean. That's right. You better understand it. If you wash clothes, you sanctify your clothes first. <laughs> Don't you do so. That's right. You separate your whites. You separate your colors. You sanctify them. You set each apart. That's right. For what? So they can be clean. That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Right. They got to be set aside, set apart first. Yes, so you can be clean. That's right. So when you make it up in your mind and in your heart that you want to be sanctified. Sanctified. You have made up in your mind that you want to be separated. Yeah. From your former lifestyle that hinders you from being clean. That's right. Sanctification first. Sanctification is simply prepping yourself. That's right. For the cleaning process. That's right. That's what the woman do, the man do. They separate their clothes, they sanctify their laundry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Prep them. Sometimes they certain stains are more rough than others. Before they put them in the machine, put that detergent on it. Look at a husband's shirt. He don't have a ring around the collar. Some have an expressway around the collar. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Just, <laughs> just throwing it in the washing machine won't do it. No. So put that detergent on it. And then rub it. That's right. Because she don't want her husband going out looking any old type of way. Yeah. Because she represents him, he represents her. That's right. Making sure everything is pressed right, look right, all in place. That's it. That's not pride, that's clean. That's it. That's right. I don't care how pressed your clothes are, how pressed is your life. That's it. You take your suit and dress it to the cleanest, fine. Fine. But now you got to bring your body to God's cleanness. That's right. Because it needs to be clean inside. Oh, yes. And need to be clean outside. That's right. There's a lot of stuff in us where the soap of the scriptures got to be used. That's it. Because many of our stains are long over the years yes, have accumulated rough That's hard and a lot of time we try to resort to methods to get that thing out of us on our own and it don't work when you do it your way that's right in the book of malachi chapter 3 and verse 2 we got to use some soap don't we william oh yes let's get some bible malachi chapter 3 and verse 2 follow me but who may abide in the day of his coming who may abide in the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth who corinthian god shall stand when he appear for he is like a refined he, fire he who god that's right is like a refiner's fire fire and and like fuller's soap I have a soapy gospel. <laughs> That's Amen. right. Amen. Full of Holy Ghost suds. Suds. <laughs> That's right. That's Amen. right. That you may be thoroughly washed. That's it. It takes time. Oh, yeah. God is not washing nobody quickly. No, he's not. Nobody. Nobody. That's why this machine stays on. <laughs> That's right. All of you in the same machine. Oh, yeah. One church. One church. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Wash. That's right. Give me Isaiah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 116. 116. Isaiah. I want to take my time and soak you while we're in the laundry mat today. That's right. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 16. What got to happen, Williams? Wash you. What? Wash you. For what reason? Make you clean. Go ahead. Wash you, make you clean, and when that happened, what's the result? Put away, put the, away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Yes, sir. Gotta wash you. Wash you. Now, the problem with the churches that many of you in, yeah. dry clean. <laughs> That's right. You gotta be, when them clothes real dirty, they gotta be tumbled around. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
put them in a wash machine, That's you right. gotta tumble, <laughs> wash that thing, them clothes get tumbled around. That's right. That's right. And then when the time to be rinsed, you see that water come out? Yeah. That water's all black, dirty. Oh yeah. Sometimes that woman say, all right, I'll give it another go. Another go. Put some more detergent in there. She don't throw them in the dryer yet or hang them out on the line, the clothespin. I haven't seen clothes on the line clothespin in years. Amen. Until yesterday morning when we went to Edgefield and we was there uh, at the church that was given to the truth of God. Across the street there was a woman hanging out her clothes on a clothesline. Us brothers was talking about it. I said, well, we ain't seen that in years. <laughs> We want to hang you on the clothesline of Bible. That's right. That the breeze of God may dry you out. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. Amen. That's right. Come on, Williams. Wash you. What? Wash you. Wash. Everybody need washing. Oh, yes. <laughs> Not just repenting and being baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Not that only. Only. For you got to have that. Yes, you got to have that to get your sins washed away. That's right. But now you need the Spirit of God yeah. through the Word of God yeah. to clean your mind. That's right. That's right. Clean your heart. Oh, yes. Clean your attitude. Mm. Clean up your character. That's right. Because it's stained, wrinkled, yeah. out of place. Out of place. And some of the stains that we have is because of our past experiences. That's right. Yeah. Whenever anybody come to God, yeah. you come to God dirty. Dirty. That's right. That's right. Good teaching. You know, there's a saying that's not Bible that people have been saying and hearing for years. God don't do well in no unclean temple. You's a liar. It's a lie. God don't do well in no unclean temple. Oh, no. God said it different. Yes, he did. When you're unclean, you in darkness. Darkness. I believe the book of Kings here. That's right. God said he will do well in the thick darkness. Thick darkness. And when you are in the thick darkness, you are unclean, you are in sin. Well, wait a minute, Pastor Jennings. If I'm already dirty, how can I receive the Holy Ghost? That's right. No, the question is this. If you're already clean, why do you need the Holy Ghost? That's right. First Kings chapter 8 and at verse 12. If you clean, right. you don't need the Holy Ghost. That's right. The Holy Ghost come in that dirty man and in that dirty woman to clean them. To clean them. Don't you hear the Bible say you're clean through the word that, that I, I speak unto you. Glory That's to right. God. Then look at what God say he will do. First Kings chapter 8 and at verse 12. First Kings 8 and 12 says. Then spake Solomon. Then spake Solomon. The Lord said. The Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God said it. That he would dwell. He would dwell. In thick darkness. In thick darkness. Thick darkness. If God say he will dwell there. That's don't right. tell me. No place in the Bible that says. That uh, God won't dwell in no unclean temple. Ain't no, no Bible said that. No. You said that. That's right. Your pastor said it. Yeah. Or it take God when I was on my knees, time for the Holy Holy Ghost. There was an unclean boy down there. That's right. 